So in this video, I have a model which theorizes that job satisfaction predicts knowledge sharing and also job satisfaction predicts task motivation and predicts knowledge sharing through task motivation stating the indirect uh, uh, effect and um, I also have that leadership control predicts knowledge sharing. The main focus nevertheless of this video is to help you out there understand how to interpret simple slope analysis or what you know as the moderation graph in Smart PLS. So we're using Smart PLS 3 and um, I'll go straight to the point. So the first thing we have to do is to create the product indicators. Okay, and um, our moderator is leadership control and the independent variable is job satisfaction. We choose product indicator approach and the others are fine and um, okay. So, track that out a bit. And the next one We still have to use leadership control as our moderator. And the next one will be task motivation, product indicator approach, and that's it. I'll put that this way. So basically, at this point, I would like to rename. Okay, and um, yeah. So I'll rename this LC. LC2 and I'll rename these LC1 okay I think that's fine so far and um, the next step is to calculate to calculate we go to PLS algorithm we do not use a consistent PLS algorithm because it would not produce the graph. Okay, it will not show us a simple slope information. So we use the PLS algorithm. So you could either select path or factor, whichever one is fine. I just select factor. Whichever one is fine, it will produce the same thing for you. And then um, I think we're all good and then run so before I proceed bear in mind that uh, it's in the reason for wanting to uh, use the graph is that it will save you a lot of time waiting to run the bootstrap or waiting for the bootstrap to come to uh, run its costs before you know if there is a moderation and if a moderation is significant. Um, with the simple slope with which you find down here at this point, okay, with the simple slope you'll be able to know if a model, if a graph is, uh, if, the, if there's an interaction or not. So here we, we have LC1 and um, LC2. Interesting. I'll start with LC1, which is leadership control. LC1 here shows that there is actually an interaction effect. Um, I look for where there is a possible interaction. In this case, it's at this point. Okay. Um, basically, there is no observable interaction from this particular graph because the interaction happens actually outside of this border. It, it happens outside of this border. So if you could draw, if you would draw the line all the way, the interaction will be somewhere here, I suppose. But in any case, there is an interaction effect. So basically, interactions that occur outside the observed range of values, okay, these are the values. Interactions that occur outside the border, okay, 
or outside the observed range of values are known as ordinal interactions. Why? Because they, have, they are interactions that you may not directly observe because they occur outside the borders, okay, or observed range of values. On the other hand, this kind of interaction for LC2 is known as a disordinal interaction. Why? Because there is an interaction somewhere on here, okay, and this interaction occurs within the border and does not extend beyond or does not occur outside the observed range of values. So basically there's a crossover point here and for back to LC1 there's a crossover point outside the border. That said, we understand what, inter what ordinal and disordinal interactions uh, are. Now I guess the question would be how do we, what sense do we make of these slopes? Okay, the green slope here is leadership control at a higher standard deviation, basically one standard deviation. And the blue slope here is leadership control at its mean. And the red slope here signifies leadership control at one standard deviation lower. That said, how do you know or what sense do you actually make out of this? Once you see the graph, how do you quickly interpret it? Always go for, first of all, always go for the slope that is above the mean. Okay, always go for the slope that is above the mean. And the slope above the mean after the interaction, the slope that is above the mean after the interaction gives you the first insight as to what kind of interaction it is. At this point, the slope above the mean is green, green and that means positive sign. Okay, it's a signal for a positive uh, leadership control. And what it does, being positive, is to reinforce or amplify a particular target construct. So it influences, what you can say as an interpretation here is that leadership control influences the relationship Positively, by the way, positively influences the relationship between job satisfaction and knowledge sharing. But that in itself does not give us details. To get details of this, we will try to understand how it actually influences it, even though it does it positively. So that said, one way you can interpret this would, would be leadership control actually increases the negative effect of job satisfaction on knowledge sharing. And this is because the interaction occurs in between the negative axis of knowledge sharing and that of job satisfaction. You can see the negative signs here on the observable range or observed range of values. Okay, there are, it falls on the negative axis of this uh, of knowledge sharing and job satisfaction. So it basically typifies job satisfaction originally has a negative impact on knowledge sharing. And when leadership control is exerted in this relationship or influences this relationship, it actually amplifies it or increases or reinforces or strengthens the negative impact of job satisfaction on knowledge sharing. So that said, we go over to the next one, LC2. What does LC2 have for us? Okay, LC2, interesting. You can say that LC2, leadership control here, 
it inverts the positive effects of task motivation on knowledge sharing. Okay? So what this means is leadership control having the red above the mean here which is a negative sign or indicates a negative sign as long as, long as it comes outside the interaction or crossover point okay so the red here what it does basically it weakens or dampens the positive effect of task motivation on knowledge sharing why the reason why is because the interaction occurs on the positive axis of task motivation and it also occurs on the positive axis of knowledge sharing. So that is how you explain the interaction effects using the simple slope analysis. But that's not all. In Smart PLS, if you use this chart here, if you copy this chart here, if you copy the chart, you'll find out that when you save it in the Microsoft Word document, there might be a slight change in the arrangement of the slope or slopes. Let's do that and let's find out. Okay, copied. All right, so let's, there you go. So you, if you can see this, you would find that the mean is now above. The mean is now above the uh, leadership control at minus one standard deviation or leadership control plus one standard deviation basically the mean is the, the the blue line is now above the red and the green lines so this could give you a different understanding or get a little bit confusing what you would want to do at this point is not to save it on your microsoft word or go through this approach. What you might want to consider doing is right clicking on this, okay, right click on the chart and go to save us. You go to save us and then you just type in whatever, let's say LC, LC, that'll be LC2, LC2 moderation or moderating effect all right so i'll save this here as just an image okay save as an image and then there you go that's the image so here i would like to i'll copy it so when you copy this copy and we'll try we'll try to paste it now and see we'll delete this old one and paste in the new one ah yes there you go you can see it has exactly what was produced from the software so this is how you save it so now you have a copy you can work with in the Microsoft Word document and a copy that is an image outside the Microsoft Word document. So there you go. That said, you have to be able to tell if all this information makes sense. Okay. And before we go to check the bootstrap where you can find if it is significant or not, let's confirm what we just interpreted path coefficients you go to path coefficients and yes you see yes it's a negative effect 
L2, LC2 is a negative, it has a negative effect. LC2, yeah, negative, the red, negative effect. So it's not having uh, a positive effect because that's what also the, what the part coefficient says. So with one glance at the simple slope analysis, you'll be able to just quickly explain if, if there's an interaction or not, and if it is going to be, uh, if there's a, any major effect or not, or if it's just a simple effect. Uh, something you should understand too is, if these slopes, the green or the red or either slope, if the slopes are very parallel to each other, that is, they're not curved in this way, or in a way that there, will, that there might be an interaction, inside the border or outside the border then it is insignificant so that way you don't waste your time trying to uh, run or wait for the bootstrap to tell you or not the other one lc1 of course has a positive effect which is signified here the green positive effect that said we'll check if they are significant or not or which might be significant or not So it's bootstrap, PLS basic bootstrap. I'm going to settle for 2000, although the recommended uh, value is 5000. Okay, 5000 is recommended, but I'm going to settle for 2000 because of time and uh, leave it at basic bootstrapping. Okay, what two tailed, and then uh, yes, note should be path, not factor. You've got to change it to path. Watch this, you've got to change it to path and then start let's keep our fingers crossed and let's see which would be significant or if they are significant or not hmm. Okay, there you go. Interesting result. Start with LC2. LC2 is very significant. LC2 is very significant. And the LC1, this is arguable, okay? It is, or it could be argued, depending on the literature you cite, it could be argued uh, because it is um, zero, it is less than 0 0.1. And um, it is within the range as well, 0 0.05. It is significant. So yes, that is it. That's what you ought to know regarding interpreting interaction effects using the simple slope analysis.